Thank you for tuning in to CW Hip Hop's live podcast. I'm your host, DJ Bank. Co-host here, as always, I have Garky yo, and yo, yo. Prism. What's up? We do have a special guest in the studio this week. We have Philly out of Madison. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? Happy to be here. Yeah, we're, we're excited to have you. Yeah, we're yes. happy to have you. This was one I was excited for because you just dropped your project, Love Renaissance 1437. Got a lot of questions about that. He uh, did bring us a copy of this. Of the sorry, CD. Of the CD here. Yep. It's got the cover art on there, signed on the back and on the front. So I appreciate that. I was excited to get the physical copy. That's, that is collection. that our second gift or third? Because Ace Wild brought us CDs. So that's, our, did, third, yeah. that's our third yeah. gift so far. Yes, yes. Nice. yes. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah. We do yeah. appreciate it. Glad you are able to make it up here. How was the drive? Uh, it was a long drive. Long drive? Yeah. Long drive. Um, it what? started, it was pouring rain. Pouring oh, was it bad? Shit. Driving like oh. 85 up the interstate, just straight and pouring Yikes. rain. Yikes. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, Yikes. it was all right. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll get more questions with Billy here, but we do have a few announcements beforehand. We do have our Patreon listener shout out. Thank you, Danielle, for your support each Thanks, month. Ma. We do appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Danielle. It does help us do these interviews each and every other week. It does the live pod, uh, live DJ every week so we can play the music for you guys, let you know who's dropping new music in Wisconsin hip hop here. Uh, we also do have new music for the station. We have Zildjian based out of Tomahawk. He was able to sign back up, so we got his music oh, yeah. all back in rotation. Uh, new music out of the Wisconsin hip hop scene here. JD just dropped his project, Changes, that is out now on Slapper. all platforms. Prism did a lot of the mixing for it, so you can hear some of his oh. work. And if you need some mixing work, hit him up at Prism Rap oh, on Instagram. Yeah. We also have Big Savo with his uh, EP Icon Status. Stokes with Against the Rest Volume 1. Both of those are out right now. Vinny Sincata released his song At Will, and Sammy Sin dropped Keep You Close. Those are both out right now. And then Young Sage and Cully Wax teamed up to do Toxic. Both did a great job on that song, mm -hmm. out on all, all platforms now. And we have a ton of other new music that we put out onto our Instagram page at CW Hip Hop. Garky does a great job of putting it into like, the graphic uh, where you can each see... Each week. The, yes, each week. You got what, probably fifth or sixth week now you've been doing that? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so you got a lot a lot of them there. It's nice to see like all in one spot <laughs> and you just see everybody that we... We got them all on our feeds, but you know, put it in one condensed place there. Whenever so, you're posting music, let us know. Whenever you're going to or whenever... Like if you did, say, last week and week. you want it on the next week one, I can do that. So tell us about it. We also do have our interview with Philly coming up here, uh, but next week we have JD coming into the studio to talk about his project changes. That is going to be April 13th. Uh, thankfully, it's on a Wednesday, not a Friday this year. We have... Uh, Concerts in Wisconsin here. Friday, April 8th at 10 p.m. We have JD, Prism, and Cookies and Cream performing this at Night Friday. School this in Friday. Weston, Wisconsin. Prism's going to be doing a lot of his new project, Dead Memories, a lot of the songs yes, off sir. that. Some classics, too. I'm excited to see those Hell for yeah. the first time live. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, JD nice. has his project this just dropped. Cookies and Cream have a project coming out real soon, too, so you guys are going to hear a lot of great music there. You're going to see the CW Hip Hop team there as well. We're, we're in the town here, so we're going to make sure we're out there promoting it all night. Uh, it's going to be a great time. I'm excited. It's going to be, be fucking awesome. Yeah, I might be there. You might be there? He, he might, might show up. He might he's show probably going to take a nap or something. Uh, have to leave know. right after his set. <laughs> we have uh, Saturday, April 9th at 9 p.m. Big Savo and Young Sage are going to be performing at the Oasis in Milwaukee. That location did change, so it's at the Oasis in Milwaukee. Uh, starting at 9 p.m., you guys can show up there, see their project. Uh, Big Savo just had his Icon Status release, so that's kind of his tour he's doing around the state. Check it out. Okay. I'm going to hopefully make it down to the Wisconsin Dells one that they got coming up. Yeah, here. okay. That was going to be the 22nd. But we'll get that uh, when it comes a little bit closer here. But we did have <coughs> a question for our IGTV this week. So, Garky, what was that question in our chat? The question was, what do you think is the most important part of a song? The flow, the beat, or the lyrics? And we had a lot of good answers, a lot of good participation. We really did. Young Day said uh, lyrics. Ty Murray said beat. Bogdanovich also said beat. Tom Peterson, beat. Jacob Schultz, beat. Locally Cop said lyrics. So that's a fun fact, the only person that said lyrics. Only one. <laughs> uh, Red the Rapper said flow or hook. Trin Trinviz says flow. Sosa Baby says flow. Monte says flow. Philly, what do you what, what do you got to say about this? Definitely flow. Yeah, uh -huh. flow. Yeah, I think that was that was mine as well. I'm going flow with that uh, that too. It's flow all day. Prism got flow. Flow all day. Uh, I Green think I think it's beat 100. percent Beat. Garky's going beat I'm the going one out. Beat, yep. So I think I did a quick tally on the live DJ. Uh, looks like flow one out. Like yes, it did. Quite a bit, and that was because of People the, the like host the here. 
So yeah, if you guys want to answer that, we do have it on our IGTV chat. Each week we do have a different question. We also upload it when we have uh, Spotify, when it uploads there. There's a question that is actually put in the bottom of it. You can just kind of scroll up and type your answer in there. I tried it out last week. Pretty pretty quick, easy. It puts them all right down there. So if you miss it on the live, we put it on the uh, back recording. All right, so we did last week. We started this game. So oh, we're doing the game. We're gonna do. We're gonna do the game real quick. Game. Oh yeah. <coughs> we're gonna we're gonna run through oh, this God. just so we have it for this Let's, week, okay. and then we can get right. to the. We'll try it out the mic a little bit over more. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read a lyric. Do you want to explain segment. the game? Yep. Okay. That's okay. okay. Uh, so I'm gonna read a lyric segment that's in the form of a question. We're gonna be guessing what is the artist that said it, the name of the song, and then guessing the year that it came out. You can get three points for each of these, and we're gonna, you can get one out of three, two out of three, three out of three. Somebody could sweep, some of you might not get any. But wait for one person to answer before you, before you just start shouting out the answers. Yeah, yeah. Do you want me to give somebody, like, you get yeah, one? somebody goes first, okay. like, yeah, do that, do do an order. All right. If you guys remember last week, I got destroyed by, by Prism. <laughs> I, I'm just an idiot on this, I don't know any of these. So we're, we're gonna be tallying, <laughs> we're gonna be tallying up all the guests that come I mean, in as their own. But currently we're sitting at Garhi with two points. Prism was seven, and then guest obviously this is the first one, so we're at, sitting at zero. See how many points you get, Philly? <laughs> we're gonna give you benefit here. You're gonna get to go first. All right. So the the quote is: Have you ever had shoes without shoestrings? <laughs> Call me out. Uh, let's see. Have you ever had shoes without shoestrings? So I need to know the artist name. The artist? Song name. Song name. Year. And you can guess it. And you can guess. just guess it. If you don't really know, you can just guess it. Kind of like a bonus point, but I guess. I, I yeah. got some points by guessing last time. Yeah, he did. Uh, he got all three right by guessing. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, <laughs> it was crazy. Biggie? It is not. All right, so it's open now if you, either of you have guessed. 50 cent? It is not. <sighs> what was it again? Have you ever had shoes without shoestrings? MGK. No. Oh all right, I'll give you guys three <laughs> guesses each, so if you guys... Got another one here. It's open. What are you thinking, Philly? Um, Got any other any other guesses? Yeah. Uh, now I did this one for you. I was gonna say I did kind of a, a Philly might know this one. So. Oh gosh. If you have an artist, oh. you might be able to. Kanye. Yes. Oh gosh. Yeah, that's the moment there. That's Great. The moment <laughs> Do you know what song it is? We're trying to recite the hey. recite the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> it must be. Uh... Come on, you got this. Black skin. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, it's not. Do you guys have a guess? I know I you guys are huge Kanye guess. fans. Oh, fucking massive Kanye fan, dude. You know me. <laughs> I don't have a guess. Honestly. Don't have a guess. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna say, here. dude. Give. Let me. Let me have a guess here. What? Are, you know, I wish I knew names of like Kanye West songs. Um. Gentlemen in Paris. No. Okay. It's not that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have any guesses. No. Do you have one more, Philly? Uh, for a year? Or no, for no, for, for a like, song. Yeah, for the song. Um, I feel like he's going to get it if you keep giving him guesses. You get three. I'll give you three here. I feel like that makes the game too long. <laughs> okay. It's fair. We will we'll do two. Down two. No. So it was Run This Town. Do you know what year that song Run came This out? Town. <laughs> oh, that's fun. No, it's definitely not. Uh, 2010. Ooh, no. 2008. Nope. No. 2011. Nope. 2014. No. 2009? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. I was like, it's the only one we didn't hit in that area. Yeah, you guys danced right around it. I know. Philly's got one. You got one point here. Ooh. Let me just add these in quick. <laughs> Darky has zero. Darky Let's zero. go. <laughs> All right. Next one we got. Give that one to him. I don't know. Ch what chat, did you guys know that one? No, did Jay-Z 2011? Oh, gosh. Nobody knew oh, no, the chat no. either. All right. So next one, this one's for you, Garth, we're going to start off. Oh, gosh. Damn, homie. In high school, you was the man, homie. What the fuck happened to you? That was a long one, so. I don't want 
What? Damn, homie. In high school, you was the man, homie. What the fuck happened to you? Can I have you use it in the sentence? I just did. <laughs> <laughs> um, two, two or three of them. Is I there think. a Latin Latin definition for this? Mm, no. <laughs> um, Take a guess here. Okay. Uh, Eminem. No. Okay. You're on. The, you're in a right ballpark. Anybody else got really? a guess here? Tech Nine. No. Fifty Cent. Yes. Ah, oh, yes. I said that one Fifty Cent said that. Do you know what song that was from? Um. Damn, homie. In high school, you was the man, homie. What the fuck happened to you? What the fuck happened to you? Many men. No. No. I don't know if that's a song. <laughs> yeah, probably not. That's what I'm guessing. I don't know. Was no guess prism? No. Okay. It was Wangsta by 50 Cent. Yeah, we definitely. Do we know JD what? JD got it, right? Oh, okay. JD's got Are you JD's looking at chat? Are you cheating? Oh, uh, no. Why? I didn't say it, did okay. I? <laughs> okay. That, that <laughs> is fair. That is fair. What year did that come out? 2005. No. 2002. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Philly was trying, was racking his brain over there. He was trying to figure it out. <laughs> I've definitely heard someone steal that line before. Yeah. Oh, who, I'm who sure. Who do you think stole sure. it? I don't know. I've, I've oh. heard it. Okay, okay, okay. That was an iconic blow. That was the yeah. prime fifty cent. All right, last one here. Curveball. Have you ever had sex with a pharaoh? <laughs> Lil Nas X. No. <laughs> okay, it's my guess anyways. <laughs> okay. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Jesus. No, it was. Have you I'm ever had sex with a pharaoh? Takes this shit seriously, bro. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm really lost on this one. This game's taking a while. Do, 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 do. Five seconds here. Biggie. No. <laughs> I'm just Anybody throwing guess on who said that? No. Eminem. No. Kanye West again. I knew okay. it. Do you know what song? <laughs> Have you ever had sex with a pharaoh? Again, I don't know any. This was heavy for Philly. I was like, I'm gonna get famous. it. Famous? What? what? Famous? No. Do you have another guess, quick? Uh, Ultra Light Beam. No. I'll give you one more. Those are names of songs. Ultra Light Beam. <laughs> That's the name of a. That sounds like a Kanye song. song. Um, it sounds like a video game. Have you ever had sex with a pharaoh? Somebody clip that out and send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. No Church in the Wild? No, it was Monster. That's a song oh. name? Yes. No Church in the Wild? Jay Great song, Kenya. by the way. Oh Put some respect what on it. What year was that? Names? 2011. No. 2012. No. 2008. No. 2010. Yes. Ah. <laughs> did, you, did you get Kanye West there? <laughs> huh? You guessed Kanye West? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, he did. So we got two more points there. All right. So where we're sitting currently, Garkey has two points. Prism has nine. How long are we gonna play? Game? Has four. I we have a long pot. We have a long interview to do. Well, no, that's no, that was it. That was yeah, the that's the end. Oh, oh, okay. Calm down. Okay, we're okay, getting okay. there. We're getting <laughs> there. I'm excited for the interview too. All right. So that was our little game. Making I don't know what sure. we're calling it yet. I had rapper's philosophy here. I don't know if that's gonna be the title that we have for it, but we'll yeah. iron that. We'll, we'll iron, iron that, that out because we're gonna have lyrics, not necessarily <laughs> questions every time too. We should get a timer. But yes, so that was that. Just a little uh, thing, like the same ones we flip it over. No, that that might be a good prop to bring in. Yeah, I might see what I can find there. All right, well, that's all I got, so I'm ready for the interview with you, Argarki. Finally, this guy just talks forever, Philly. I swear to <laughs> God. Um, so how do you feel coming to this interview? Uh, pretty good. Yeah? Uh, a little quiet? Are you, are you okay? Are you tired or something? Yeah, I don't know. I stayed up too late last night. Uh, uh, excited. Uh, gotcha. yeah. yeah, you couldn't sleep. It's like the night before Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you go. So right off the bat, I just want to welcome you to CW Hip Hop Studio. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you taking your time out of your day to come come through and, and come down from yes. Madison. Hell so yeah. it's really nice of you. So uh, you you did just drop your new album, mm -hmm. Love Renaissance, fourteen thirty seven, February twelfth of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about it more lately or later. But first, how's the release been so far? Um, I mean it's been all right. Um, I've gotten a lot of great feedback from who has heard the album. Um, I just kind of wish I didn't do an album, or at least I didn't like. Eight singles before. A little I promo mean, some before. of them were singles, though. I guess before. Yeah. Right? So I okay. had four or five singles on there, um, but 
I just feel like there are about 20 songs on the album that could have been like hit singles and like all of them. Like I have songs that like 10 streams on the album right now, and I'm just feel like get looked, got, they get looked over in there. Yeah. I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like 20, yeah, an hour of some songs that's gonna be yeah hard. That's fair. I mean. Uh, just having all of the songs together definitely puts them all on a level together. But like when you release just a single, yeah, you can really like digest it more. So yeah. I think I see what you're saying there. But well, what what ones did you drop from the project that were singles? Um, let's see. I dropped "Where the Angels Fly," "Dancing in the Moonlight," um, "Hypnotize Me," and "Grease." Oh, Grease, wasn't yeah. designated driver. I, I didn't put it on there. Oh, okay. that one was on uh, CW did. Hip Hop exclusive for a bit. So we did play that one for a while. <laughs> so, the name Philly. Yeah, Philly. Isn't just Philly. It's yep. Philly. Yeah. With it's a, got question, a mark. question mark at the end. Yeah. So I'm this is what about. happened. Um, so in 2020, I was in a relationship, and we were doing this song called Lover Girl. Um, and at the very end, like the last thing that the girl says is Philly. Is that that tag that I hear sometimes throughout your music? It's, it's sometimes. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I, I, w I originally, I wanted to change my name because I used to go by, uh, so I, I went on Instagram and I was like, I need like a unique Instagram name because yeah, like yeah. all these rappers have like unique Instagram names. So I was like, oh, so I need something Philly. And I was like, YWB Philly. It aged horribly. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it aged very horribly. Um, people like, people just were they just catch me out on the street. They'd be like, hey, young white boy. I was like, oh, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> young white boy. Um, oh, no. I yeah. didn't even think that would be the yeah. acronym. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and then I was like, no, it means, like, young Wolverine. Cause, like, I'm from Michigan. And I was like, I really just, like, shot myself in the foot here. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> well, I'm going to rebrand because I want to come back with better music. And I want to change my name because I feel like there's, like, a whole stigma around this name. So I was changing my name. And this guy that I used to make music with, uh, Rija, he, got, he goes, Rija, and then there's like an exclamation point. I was like, what if I did like Philly exclamation point? He's like, I think like a question mark to say you better. I was like, yeah, definitely. Interesting. Okay, so we're, said, we were going to have, like, yeah. interesting. We were going to have Philly, but that was <laughs> Philly. Okay. <laughs> Maybe he just didn't want you to copy his, though. Maybe. Maybe. He was like, nah, you can't do that, bro. Nah, like question mark should be mark. way yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, get that question mark. Get the other <laughs> one. We can be <laughs> Complete opposites. Yeah. Uh, so how long ago did you start making music, and what inspired you to start? Um, I started making music. Okay, so I started like creating the actual music in 2018. Okay. Um, I got a studio. Well, I got a microphone for my birthday, and it was an XLR mic, and I was like, oh, so I actually have to spend another three hundred dollars on this. Yes. Um, I hate that <laughs> shit. <bro. laughs> that so, like, oh, this doesn't plug into my computer. <laughs> <laughs> See this plug on the back. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I started making music then, and I actually I started writing because I fell in love with this girl um, in Canada, and okay. I was like, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be this huge artist, and I'm gonna be able to get plane tickets to come see you. <laughs> so that's that's why I started making music. Interesting. Um, okay, okay. Wait, you started making music just because you you wanted to buy plane tickets to go see see a girl? Yeah, I was like so in love with her. Damn, man. Damn. Love is that drug, dog. Usually, usually it's like you broke up with a girl and you start making music. This man's like, I'm going to make it work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm changing my whole life for you, for baby. Me. For you, babe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what kept you in it, then, if that was your driving inspiration? Um, well, I think I just realized, like, I, I realized how much I had to say. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, at first, like, Molly, on, he could tell you I was garbage. <laughs> <laughs> he's, la he's laughing over here on the um, couch. Like I, I could pull up a song, but like it, it was just like me trying to, me trying to rap to fit in, and to like find who I was. And then like at some point, like the point where my career kind of turned around is when I, I started rapping and like singing so that I, I could express who I was, um, not like trying to be anyone, just like be myself. Of course. So you said you were trying to fit in. Do you have any artists or artists that were kind of? Big influences for you that you're trying to match. So in 2019, uh, NLE Chapa was a big one. Oh, <laughs> ah, really? interesting. That's interesting. Kind of like another contrast to like his music. Listen to NLE Chapa and <laughs> he then gave go me guess. I was not gonna guess. <laughs> yeah, guess yeah. So never in a million years did I guess that. I don't know. He was like making these songs on these hard beats, and I like I, I started out producing. I was like, oh, I can make these beats. So like I'm making these beats, and I'm like, 
All right, I'm making the songs that go with it too. Why aren't they blowing up? People are like, it's fucking garbage. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> At least you got homies that are gonna be real with you. Like, yeah, it's I mean, not that it's that's true, bad. Though. Stop. It's it just keep working. Well, I, I always ask my friends. I was like, why didn't you tell me I was garbage? And there was like, they were like, we we saw the vision. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes it takes a process. Sometimes it takes growth. So I mean, sometimes you don't want to like distinguish the flame before it before it's able to you know go on its own. So like, I understand why they were doing that, but at the same time, you need people that are gonna tell you like, they give you at least constructive criticism and not just tell you, oh, you're shit. They'd be like, oh, well, here you can try this or do that maybe. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, so do you have a team or like friends that you work with often that help you make make music? Uh, yeah, I I make music with uh, Michael Liriano like every day. You can go ahead and shout everybody out. Yeah? Um, I definitely me and Molly on every me, day though. Yeah, okay. we're we're like on the call every day like writing and shit. Oh, that's what's up. Um, okay, Molly on he comes into my room every night and he's like I'm making a song. Like, okay. Roommates? <laughs> yeah, he he lives with me. Okay, okay. Um, and then. Uh, I work smiley. Um, I love working with him. I love just hanging out with him. Really nice guy. Um, and then I like Blue Jacket, Tino, Kai Twenty Two. It's like all of all of Scud House. It's like a whole collective type shit. And they're just all beautiful people. Scud House? Yeah. What, what is that? Is that like so house thing? Yeah, is that a frat house thing? No, no. Oh, okay. So so Scud House is just like of hip -hop. it's kind of a collective uh, group of rappers, just okay. like artists. Um, so it started with Scudda Smiley, and then he and his best friend Chick, or Trey, he goes by Scudda Chick, and then like, the rest of us aren't like Scudda whatever, but like we're all part of the collective. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, dude. Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Alright, looks like I got some editing to do. Yeah, alright, cool. Um, but yeah, um, I mean... We're like we're the type of people that are that'll sit in the studio for like ten hours and do some dumb shit and then we'll go out and barbecue like. Okay. Okay. Do you like, use any of the ten hours of dumb shit? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He says. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I I like to take my time and mix my vocals and stuff. So I I'll take like designated driver and hypnotize me. They took like ten hours to mix. Oh wow. Okay. I was up. I Straight? I That's yeah. Jesus. I recorded the song and then like at like four a.m. I was like. <sighs> oh my god. Um. But yeah, there's guys in there, they'll just like, they'll go bar for bar and make a song in like three minutes. And I'm just, what? There's some crazy there's some in that house. Yeah. yeah. The Wisconsin thing? Yeah. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah. Gotta look up the Scud house, I the guess. Scud house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what kind of passions do you have outside of music? Uh, I'm a very big fisherman. Really? Fisherman. Yeah. Okay, what's your favorite fish to, what's your favorite fish to, you know, fish for? Uh, catfish. Catfish. Interesting. Yeah. Do you do the old time catfish where you got your hand in the hole? Okay, no, no, okay. No. What is that? So if you reach into holes and stuff, you can get like snakes and turtles and stuff. Fair it's not up, really, it's up. not really big in Wisconsin either. There's not as many, mm -hmm. but I, I catch them with hot dogs. Interesting. Like you, like on a bait or? Water. Yeah. So I'll just put a hot dog on my hook and just okay. throw it out in the water and let it sit down, like a whole hot dog. And those, Jesus. Really? Yeah. I mean, they'll eat anything. Well, that's right. They'll eat that's anything. Right. Um, but yeah, that's. Interesting. I never want to think of you as a fisher. Do you like to be on the dock or do you like to be on a boat? Dock. Yeah, I like the shark too. Yeah. That's why the question mark is that at the end of the saying keeps guessing. It keeps you guessing. No, Philly, you don't. The mystery man, <laughs> like that anime character, the the cool mystery guy. Uh huh. Exactly. So <laughs> just shoreline fishing then, or? Yeah, like I mean most of the time. I mean I I used to do like fishing camps and such, so I'd go out in like canoes and that was fun. I once caught a catfish trolling, just like a big mu musky spinner. Oh really? Um, you ever gone like salmon fishing? No, I, I definitely want it. They get huge. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. I went one time when I was like ten, so I don't really remember. But either way, it was. It was. I didn't. I didn't do most of the work. It was my dad behind me doing <laughs> most of the work. But it was pretty fun. Yeah. Got seasick on the boat though. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Now last question, I guess, about fishing. I'm sure people are real interested. Yeah, but I'm sure. What? Why catfish? I guess. Uh. Well. Okay. So when I was ten or twelve or so, I went to this place called Lakeview Park, and it's like this little pond. And I saw like this like catfish. It was like right at the top. It was like dying. Well, I don't know if it was dying, but okay. it was like sunbathing like unnormally. So I was like, oh, that's kind of sad. So then I went home. I was like, how can I catch these things? And I, the first thing I see is hot dogs. So I go back there and I'm like catching these little like 12 inch catfish. And my friend Devin's like, you got to go across the street like on the big lake. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And then we, we threw this whole hot dog on my ultralight rod. And he spent like 30 minutes catching this like. 34 inch catfish. Jeez. Wow. And it's like a boat launch. So I'm like directing traffic. He's like adjusting the drag, trying to get this fish in. 
Um, oh my god. Yeah. So it's just kind of like, what, lack of a better word, you were just hooked right from the start. Yeah. Hooked right from the start. Yeah. <laughs> this guy with the puns. <laughs> Oh, my, uh, my dad was a big catfisher. Uh, he, we, I go to the river with him, and yeah, that was one of his favorite fish to catch was because it was just the fight that he had. With them. Yeah. He was like, yeah, these things make it fun to fish. Hell yeah. That's cool. That's cool. If you could headline a concert tonight and pick three artists to open for you, who would they be and why? Uh, I think. Yeah, um, I would do. I would do. Uh, Michael Liriano. Uh, Molly on and Smiley. Um, I figured those were the answers to be honest. That'd be a good show. Because they're just super talented motherfuckers. Like, super talented and like, um, I don't know. They're, like, they're not just like artists that I work with, like, they're my brothers. They're like, the homies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're headlining it. What order do you put them in? Like, who's going to really get the crowd going? Who's keeping oh, the energy going? Oh, that's, that's a good, that's a good point. Um, I think I'm going to put... Smiley, and then Molly on, and then Michael. I think Smiley because like Smiley's like 22, 23, so like he has a bit of experience. And then I put Molly on in the middle because he doesn't really have the experience, but he has some music. And then I put Michael because Michael always seems to have something to do with the fans. Every time I've gone to one of his shows, he he just always gets them super involved. So. Yeah, That's yeah. Good. Uh, I remember that from the the rap royale. Michael was and I'm going out there. Yeah, he was. Right in the crowd, just going ham with everybody. Oh, it was, yeah. it was a great, real. great way to engage the crowd there, dude. So it was I was, I was there, and I'm, I'm like right in the middle of the mosh. And I see Michael fall, and I'm just thinking, oh no, he's gonna die. Oh. And I'm, I'm like diving towards him, and then the security guy just comes up behind me, just, he just grabs him right up. Oh jeez, oh jeez, yeah. <laughs> they, they were ready then. They, yeah, they were ready, dude. Did you feel the floor, by the way? The floor, oh, I thought the floor was, in that place was gonna, was gonna break. Fall, bro. Oh my god, I was actually scared. Like I was like walking to the edge of the room. Like I'm, I'm over here. I'm not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> I'll enjoy the music from over here. <laughs> you know, it was just, it was crazy. I've never felt the floor bend that much in my life. I swear to God. So when you started making music, you said it was kind of to get the plane tickets to go see your girl out in uh -huh. Canada. I guess now that I'm assuming that's no longer a thing. Yeah, I've had like three relationships since then. Okay, okay. <laughs> so now, now that you're still kind of in your beginning stages, do you have any specific goals or um, expectations with making music now? Uh, my biggest goal is I want to work with Kanye. I want to make a song with Kanye. Ooh, okay. That's a good like top goal to like shoot mm -hmm. for. Yeah. I agree with that. I think you guys can make some good music because yeah. there's a lot of influence on the project you just dropped of Kanye on there. So Hell yeah. I can see you already fitting right in with his style of beat. Hell yeah. So to my knowledge. The first track you ever released is called Gen Z. It was posted October mm -hmm. 15th, 2020 on your YouTube channel first. Was there anything before that? Uh, yeah, so that was that was the start of my rebrand. Okay. Mm. So when I became Philly, that was what I wanted to come back as. So before that, it was all YWB Philly. So I had, I actually dropped like four or five albums under that. Damn, um, okay. And the last one was called Judas. And it was about uh, my last ex. Uh, she left me three weeks after my brother went to prison on text after 14 months. Um, so I had I had a uh, snake as the cover art, and it was shaped in an S because that was the first letter of her name. Yep. And then its tail was hanging me, and then its head was eating me alive. Oh damn. Ooh. Okay. That's, That's a lot artistic. of yeah. Yeah. Design but it's there. also like it's a message at yeah. the same time. So yeah. that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I like that. Did you design that by coming up with that I yourself? I designed it myself. Nice. Yeah. That's, awesome. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So is there a reason that you posted on YouTube before any other platform? I don't think I did. I think um, it just says October 15th because it was like 11 p.m. Oh, Three. so like it all dropped at the same time, but for some reason you used it by a different time. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, technically. <laughs> technically. <laughs> looking at the numbers. Uh-huh. Tripping um, them up. You know your stuff. Usually this track is very know. political and takes a look at the country we live in and some of the, some of its morals. And you talk about like George Floyd as well, mm -hmm. like that whole uh, that whole ordeal. Mm -hmm. Was the track created because of the events? Yeah. yeah. I mean, 2020 was like a pretty like... In my opinion, it was like a pretty emotionally traumatizing year. Um, just like for everybody, like we just grew like so numb to everything. And like we got used to seeing all that shit. Um, and I think because people just like weren't at work, it was all just kind of blown out of proportion. Um, 
but yeah, I was actually, I made a whole album about it called Resurrection, and it was just about all the events that happened that year, and just like stuff that I was dealing with. And like, it was a great album, but after I dropped Gen Z and What a Time to Be Alive, and then I started, I started doing some other stuff, and I was like, I don't, I don't want to drop this. Like, it was just so, it's so sad, and like so upsetting. Like, it's, it's a great project. It's a great rap album, but like, it just like, like listening to it is hard. Okay, um, I understand that. Yeah, I just, I just felt like people would have had enough of it. Like, as like, a country, like as an audience. People see enough of that in their feet. Like I just wanted, I wanted to bring something better, like more joy, okay. um, just like a different sound. Yeah, that's a good. I understand that. A good change 100%. of it. I mean, yeah, you can't really do anything with that to like change anything. Do something different. I like that approach to it. Now, real quick before we go on to the, yeah. the past year, I do want to let our Instagram chat know that you can actually ask Philly questions. We do have the Q and A right down here. You can put them in there. Right at the and bottom of the chat. At the yeah. end of the the podcast, questions that we got, we'll pull that up and we'll ask Philly your questions. So you can add them in as we're going through the the interview here. Just want to yeah. shout that out. Yeah, no worries. I got you. Uh, and so you did mention uh, what a time to be alive, which was posted December twenty fifth, twenty twenty. So was there anything that inspired this track too? Was that like kind of like a um, going off of Gen Z or? Yeah, a little bit. This it was like a lot less political and it was more just like uh, more straightforward because like we were we were in the midst of a pandemic and there was all this bullshit going on around the world and the the line the line is what a time to be alive what a party it gonna be when the clock is twelve on New Year's and it's still twenty twenty like just because we're going to twenty twenty one don't mean we don't have to deal with the same bullshit like we didn't change shit. Okay, like, I like that. Okay. Um, that was good. I don't know, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. When, I, when yeah. I first heard uh, that, I bar, that when bar. I first heard that bar, I did. Uh, I thought of the Y two K event where they thought that the numbers weren't going to change. Okay. On the computers. <laughs> Just another crisis. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Same shit, different year. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, <laughs> and that's also kind of the first song where we we talked kind of about um, your tag, the Philly with the question mark. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the first song that I heard it in as well when I was listening through your discography. Um, is is there like a certain reason that you made it your tag and do you would you use it on more songs? No, I don't think so because it was actually like my my ex did so she she did the tag mm-hmm. and like I made the songs Gosh, before we broke up. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. Yeah, so you like, probably I, reuse that. It's understandable. Um, but yeah, it's a nice tag. But you know, <laughs> I, I can remake it pretty easily. But, like, you could. I mean, that's true. That's true. Have the new girl do it. Right? Oh, well. <laughs> I'm just like about to get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, out of your first two songs, which one do you think best re- represents you? Um, I thought I think "What a Time to Be Alive" is a lot more uh, complete. Uh, just like not as like a song, but like as like all the events. Like it talks about whatever. It's just. There's so many bars that, like, if you look at them, you're like, oh, okay. And then you're like, oh, he's talking about so-and-so's wife from the 200 BC. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there was, like, some line about, like, a king or something. And I was like, but not X. They're not so-and-so. Like, I don't know. Okay. Um, so do you use a lot of, like, past history in your... Because, like, Love Renaissance 1437, like... When I think of Love Renaissance, I'm thinking back like 1400s and like old back in history. So is that a theme you like to bring into your music? Yeah, I mean, I I just like my dad is like a huge uh, just like fact buff. Like he knows like he was like on Canada's Quiz Show, I think. Oh um, really? Yeah. So he just pulls okay. out anything so and everything when it's he, relevant. So he he'll just like randomly tell me facts, and I'll be like, oh cool, maybe I'll use that sometime. Yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> oh let me write that down. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how? How long did it take uh, to find your sound, or, and, or how did you come across it? Took me two and a half years. <laughs> um, it wasn't even like my best sound, but I. So I recorded Natalie, um, and it was originally called Baby Please, and then I dropped the girl's name in the verse. And I was like, okay, I'll just call it Natalie. <laughs> yeah. um, and then uh, Smiley's like. It, it was with Smiley, right? So he's like, something doesn't sound right. Come over here. So I was like, okay. So I went over to his house, 
and he's like sorting it out and I'm like so how do you do this like what are all these he's like oh these are like presets you just do this this and this and I was like I need to do this what the heck um, and that's when I that's when I started using layers like oh, most yeah. of my most of my stuff that you hear now um, yeah layers layers layers, layers. man like layers. onions and ogres like layers. onions and ogres bro <laughs> on god so, so what's your first like setup look like my first setup yeah yeah, like what, it was pretty good. So that, that it was, was pretty good. That was so, okay, that okay. was the one thing that carried me. So I have, I mean, it's basically what I have now, except I, I have like monitors and stuff. But okay. it's just like a, uh, it's a Shure SM7B mic. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, you got me jealous. Yeah. With the audio interface and uh, nice. cloud lift. That's a lot of money. And then uh, it's like the Yamaha headphones, like the normal like one hundred dollar ones, I think. Okay. Oh. What what doll were you working on? But what? Uh, DAW, like uh, FL oh, Logic. Oh, uh, Logic, yeah. Uh, Logic, okay. gotcha, gotcha. Did you, did you prefer Logic, or did you try any other DAWs? Um, my my producer, uh, Teddy, his thing is Yo Control. Um, he does he does FL Studio, and I just did Logic because it was easier to get cracked on my laptop. Ah, <laughs> you didn't want to pay. You paid for the Sure SM7B, but not the <laughs> not the dog. All right, dude. Yeah, I see where it is. Uh, but yeah, my, my original producer was one of my friends, Jan, and he he did FL Studio. So like, I, I know how to do FL Studio, just like not super well. It seems a lot more advanced, honestly. It's more for beats, I think. Like, it really is. That's what producers yeah. say they prefer, and rappers usually do like a Logic or whatever else. I mean, it, you can do it on there, but yeah, it's, mm -hmm. there is a lot more to it. Because I know when we first opened it up, I'm like, this is a spaceship. Like, I have no idea what <laughs> oh, yeah, to get, how to get this thing going. Yeah. Once, once Where's you, the play button? Once you figure <laughs> it out, though, it's pretty simple, but you've got to put a lot of hours in to just figure out what the Going on. What does that button hurt. do? This button do? Uh -huh. How do I get to this page? <laughs> a couple buttons do the same thing, so it's yeah. like just repetitive. Yeah, yeah, it's a problem sometimes. So you <laughs> mentioned the song Natalie, which you released actually on February fourteenth, Valentine's Day mm -hmm. of, uh, last year, uh, and then you you explained there was uh, your your ex, and then is that the person? Is that her in the cover art as well too? Uh, no, that wasn't an ex. Um, that was so Natalie was a girl that was like. Not Is this gonna person. get you in trouble? No, I, okay. I, I don't really know her anymore. Okay, like, okay. Um, she was a girl I went out on a date with, and I thought it went really well. And she's like, she was like, I thought she was really pretty, whatever, blah blah blah. And then she ghosted me, mm. and she was like, yes. sexting other people like during the date. And then uh, mm. the next time she snapped me was like a week later, and it was with some girl that she told me that she wanted to fuck while we were hanging out. Oh, oh. damn. <laughs> yeah. Um, but That's you, you blocked those whores. Yeah. <laughs> They're just looking to rile you up. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, the current Natalie cover art is Lives of My Girlfriend. Okay, okay, okay. That's That sums that up. Uh, so what kind of music did you listen to as a kid? Do you think the music that you listened to growing up helped you kind of make, make your music? Yeah, so... I mean, I mainly initially grew up on, like, rock and stuff, like 80s, whatever, like Billy Joel, Michael Jackson. All that yeah. stuff, because like my parents are old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how, so, I guess how old are, are, do, do you know? They were born in '65. Well, okay, so yeah, 1965. So when they were like 20, it would have been like 1985. So like Michael Jackson, Billy Joel. Okay. So they they like the Eagles, okay. Billy Joel, etc. Gotcha. You know? gotcha. Um, but yeah, I think I always wanted to kind of like make music like that, because I was like, this is just like like it makes you feel good and stuff. And then I, I would like try to sing, and I was like. <laughs> and then eventually I, I got like layers and shit and then like a month later I made where the angels fly. I was like, oh, I can do this. Okay. Oh yeah, exactly. You got to find you just got to find it, man. So yeah. what what uh song number was where the angels fly? Like how many have you made before that? Is that like song number 4? Okay, so my first album Dark Nights had 12 songs. Then I dropped a song, no, that was on the next album. Then the next album had called Hate Crimes. It had 18 songs. Oh, Damn, so this was like back in the catalog a little bit. Okay, was okay. this why, why This is why WB or why WB. Okay, okay. But Where the Angels Fly, you said? Where the Angels Fly was like my fourth or fifth song. As Philly. Yeah. As Philly. Okay, okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. I was yeah. curious if like 
it was one of your first songs. Like you made two of them, and then like you really found it on that one. And you're just like, oh, I'm chasing that high. Yeah. No, I, I I just like I would like be trying to like find stuff. I don't know. I used to try to make my own beats too, and like I was good. Like I was pretty damn good. I still am, and like I I have producers that are pretty damn good too. But like it would just for me, it's a lot easier to just like find something on YouTube. Like if you sound amazing on something, you can afford to buy the lease. Like I mean, yeah, honestly, yeah. I agree with you. Well, they're, not, they're usually not that expensive either. A couple, yeah. 20 bucks, 25 bucks. Yeah. I guess it depends where you get the beat, though. Beatstars.com. Beatstars.com. <laughs> Purchase your track today. today. Literally. <laughs> so you then released Sponsor a song us. called <laughs> Grease on SoundCloud. Uh-huh. March 19th, 2021, which is another, like, sappy love story song, kind of. So yeah. what, what, what inspired that one? So uh, that song was about going to a uh, drive-in movie theater and watching Grease. That actually happened. Um, oh, okay. oh, okay. So, that song actually got me in trouble. <laughs> oh, oh. Story so I I posted a snippet, and then uh, the person that was involved with it, uh, like, was that the driving? Okay. She texted me and DM me, and she's like, "You said you would make songs about me, blah blah blah." And I'm like, "Look, look, look. It's just like the idea. It's not like about you. It's okay." And like, I I kind of got away with that. Um, but it was about her. And then, no, okay, so, <laughs> then, then she, like, followed me back, like, two days later, and then I posted this snippet for Anxiety Attack, and I was like, there's no covering this one. There's, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, God. Oh, the place is sick. You gotta stop making songs about females that you know, dude. It, start making uh, no. hypothetical. Dude, you know? he's got some good music come out of it. I, I, I mean, that's true. That's I, true I started blipping names out. That was my big oh. awakening. <laughs> yeah, good. Change good the idea. Name. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't make the song name Natalie. Make it you know? Jennifer or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's something completely random. You know? Hell yeah. So, so yeah. the hook of the song says, Watching Grease Late at Night Under the Stars. So when's the last time you watched Movie Grease? Uh, I've only seen... Mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna just... It would have been in, like, summer 2020. So we watched it. I haven't seen a movie in forever. I haven't heard of that movie in I forever. may have seen some I, snippets. I don't know if I've ever watched it. You saw snippets? Oh, I've never, never seen it. You haven't yeah. watched it? I don't think I've oh watched Grease God, all the way through. It's a classic. I know. It is a great movie. movie. Ass movie. My girlfriend's going to be like, they have a great this. soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? We're going to have to tell Lex. <laughs> yeah, no. Grease is a classic all day. I know it is. I know it is. <laughs> Same with Star Wars. I just can't get it. Uh, so then June 5th, mm-hmm. 2021, you dropped a song that would turn out to gain 70,000 streams on Spotify called Designated Driver featuring Eliza Hopkins. Mm-hmm. What's the story there? So I was up late at night um, and I was on the phone with Eliza. It was kind of the beginning of our relationship. Um, and I was like, I found this cool beat. What should I write about? She's like, make a song about your friends who do drugs. I was like, okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, I. I Did she I, give you that response like quick too? Yeah. Oh wow, okay. I, I was like, Okay, so if you look at the lyrics of the song, like, you'll you'll hear some things, and you'll be like, what? Like, uh, I, it's all, like, real. Um, like, say you need my gum wrapper, you just want to roll one quick. Mm-hmm. I'm going be down bad sometimes. Um, <laughs> oh, really? Your friends be rolling with gum wrappers? Okay, so... Don't... What part? Like, the metal, or are they, like, taking the wrap? It was like a... Yeah, it was like, it was a paper gum wrapper. Oh, okay. So, like, a hubba bubba paper gum wrapper. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like pure plastic. That would be bad. Yeah. 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 No, that's extra, was, you know, like extra gum or five gum, how it comes in like the tin foil. Oh, yeah. That's what we were thinking at yeah, first. Like you can yeah. pull that tin foil off and oh. there's that wax. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, what? But nah, it's mainly, it's mainly just about like addiction and shit. Like, trying to help people get over addiction, like beat their demons, um, and just like being rejected. Just like straight up, that's just how it is. Um, because it's not, it's not like people love what they're addicted to more than you. It's just that they're addicted to it, and they can't help that. Um, See, I kind of interpreted it a little bit like you were almost, I guess, like you, like you said, helping them in a way. But at the same time, someone enabling it. Like you like, like you, they're your friends. You liked it, so it's it's okay that you you know you're designated driver. Yeah, it's more just like. All right, I guess that's what it's come to. Cause like I, I didn't have my license. It is what I, it is. I made it when I didn't have my license, and I dropped it when I didn't have my license too, actually. Um, but like, that's gonna be like, damn, you drive me like your license song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the next song you dropped was "Hypnotize Me." That was July second, twenty twenty one, which seems to be about the toxic love and how it hypnotizes you. So can I talk about that trick? What inspired it? Um. So I was on the phone with Liza. 
Um, <laughs> he had to think about how he's gonna work this. <laughs> All right, I understand. And I, I was just like, I found a beat, and like, I had kind of figured out how to mix my vocals. So I was like, okay, well, if I can like sing in this key, do whatever, then like, that's what it is. So I was, I was just writing, and I was just like, I just need to make a song. It's toxic as shit. Okay. Like, I, I just need to make it so like it just seems like horrible. Um, so like one of the lines was like, "Tell me I'm worthless, girl. You're perfect too." But then like it all gets wrapped in, and um, at the end, the last hook it go before it goes, but it's okay because I love you too. Um, and then it's just like yeah, hypnotized, um, like you're hypnotized by somebody, like you're you're so into somebody that you can't see everything wrong with them. That just like completely ruins you. you. Miss all the red flags. And that's the song with the guitar solo, right? Yeah. So that was actually my my hip hop and band teacher. He was listening to it. He was like, "You could use like a guitar solo here." I was like, "Oh damn! Oh for real?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah. You should, you should try and do something." I was like, "Okay." So he connects it, and he just starts going, "Boo do 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 do," and he's just like, oh. "It was fucked it up." It was just like that. Nice. That's so that was something. your teacher who actually did the yeah. Show. Hell yeah. Douglas Brown. He actually, he was in the running for a Grammy. Really? For, for music teaching. Yeah. Oh, oh really? wow. Yeah. When? What? Do you know a year at all? I think it was. 2020 to tw no like 2021. Also last year. Really? Yeah. Interesting. That's kind of yeah. dope. That's fucking. I didn't know yeah. that was a, an award they gave away. I guess. Yeah. Well. Yeah. My high school, they they really started uh, focusing in on like hip hop curriculum. So like right as mm, I took like, like two classes for hip hop, but like the year after I left, so this year I was a senior last year. They have they have a curriculum where their students can spend like a whole a day learning through hip hop. So like my friend. We got to remember he's from Madison. We're from yeah. the small town yeah. of, of oh, like, I wish my school did this. Yeah, yeah we, no we didn't way. have this kind of this my, kind of stuff. One of my producers, my friend Kari, um, like I was, I was talking to one of the teachers the other day. He's like, "Yeah, he just makes beats the whole day," <laughs> and like now he has like connects with like Miracle Lemon or like uh, Internet Money, and I'm like, "Jeez, crazy!" Dude. Next, next Nick Mira, huh? Yeah. He's, yeah, he's talented. So. I yeah. like that they, they incorporated that. That's a cool. That is cool really cool. Yeah. I would totally. Take I wish that. my yeah. I wish my school had a budget like that. Yeah, like Chinese was cool, but like teach me hip hop. That, yeah, teach yeah. me something I enjoy or something I'll use. Oh yeah. <laughs> so then after you posted that, just a month later on July sixteenth, twenty twenty one, you posted "Where the Angels Fly," which is a super groovy disco kind of like R and B kind of song, which contrasts your past song, uh, which is like portrays a deeper meaning with a lot of emotions. What was this ex you experimenting with your sound? Yeah, I mean, I just I wanted to make a song that made people feel good. Okay. Um so like I remember my my dad never really liked my music cuz like he doesn't like rap music. He nicknames it crap. Um <laughs> So Boomer terminology. Man. So um I was like, okay. So I remember I made that song and then I showed it to my parents and he's like you plagiarized. Your parents like Michael Jackson, though, right? Yeah. That's I would consider him hip hop. Oh, he's pop. Michael he's Jackson. Pop. He was just he's pop. the king part of, of pop. King of pop. That's his name. Yeah. yeah, he was not yeah. hip hop. Part I, I'm gonna go with he, that. He inspired a lot of hip hop. Period. So I oh, mean, like, yeah. I, they kind of got to give it to it there. But all right, sorry. Go, go on. <laughs> no, right. you're good. You're good. But yeah, that was actually the first of the four songs I dropped last summer that I made. Um, so I made that one at the end of March, and then Anxiety Attack, Hypnotize Me, and Designated Driver made all those during April. So I just I kind of went on a tear, and then I went to Florida in June, and I made on the clock. Sorry, I'm getting off topic, but <laughs> yeah, April April seems to be my month. I don't know why. Okay, okay, okay. okay. That's pretty cool. Hey, good thing is we're starting it up again here. Yeah, it's, just, it's April sixth, man. Hell yeah, this is your month. Let's yeah. go. Uh, so then you waited till September eighth, twenty twenty one, and you dropped the Anxiety Attack, which seems to be a heartbreak song. And then no, who, who hurt you, bro? Was it Jennifer? <laughs> yeah, it, it was um, Jennifer. So, um, yeah, I think we'll get her. We'll get her back. Don't worry. I I was waiting for uh, someone to come get a certain something or drop it off, and they just pissed me off. So then I made that song. Okay. Um, but yeah, that that was that song was kind of the moment where I just kind of let go. I was just kind of like, okay, I've done like everything I can to be respectful, and I just don't feel like it's coming back to me. So, fuck it. And then I, I actually, I came up with the guitar, so I was like, doo 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 And then I sent it to uh, Teddy, and he just threw some drums on it, and I was like, perfect. There you go. Hell yeah, that's and awesome. I, I posted it on TikTok, and everybody's like, this it's is your best good. song, this is your best song. It is really fucking good, man, honestly. 
and it's cool that you you know you're producing your own shit too. That that definitely helps with you know tying the whole thing together, making it more you. Hell yeah. So I, I I like that a lot. Yeah, you can customize it a lot more. Fast. Hell yeah. Got those stems. Uh -huh. <laughs> Then October 15th, 2021, exactly a year after posting Gen Z, you dropped two tracks. One called Love Scars, which is, you said, Witchblade Remix. Uh, and the other song was called Trauma. Yeah. Wait, um, what's a Witchblade Remix? What's that? What so that? Witchblade by Lil Peep and Lil Tracy. Oh, okay. okay. Witchblade, cocaine. No, I have no oh, idea. Oh, okay, yeah. I know the melody. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, made, I made Love Scars in like January of 2021. And I just kind of had it sitting around, and my friends told me not to drop it because it was a quote unquote glorified remix. And I was like, all right, fuck you. SoundCloud, it um, yeah. Yeah, and then Trauma, um, it's a great track. Um, it's, it's, it's like a depressing song about like a dysfunctional family, right? Yeah, so it, it kind of it starts all the way back when I was like 13, and then it goes all the way to when I was like 18. Um, it kind of, what inspired it was actually. Uh, Three kids from my school died in a car crash in uh, October this last year, um, and I was just like kind of reflecting on like everything that led up to that, and I was like, okay, like, this is what it is. Um, I was thinking about actually buying the beat, and, like posting it on like major services, and I was like, just make it a sound like thing. That's fine. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Um, um, it's got a story behind it, so that's, that's cool. It's, it's a, it was a really, really good song. So I, if you do ever end up buying the beat, I definitely want want that on Sound or Spotify. I mean, oh, yeah. um, and then after a sad song like Trauma, you then on my 21st birthday, October 29th, 2021, uh, you dropped probably one of the best collabs of that century called Dancing in the Moonlight with Wisconsin mm -hmm. artist uh, Michael Liriano, extremely talented. Uh, the track is an absolute vibe. Yes. How was making that? So, this is what happened. So, I had... Michael's, like, kind of an edgy guy, if you don't know him. Oh. So, like, yep. um... <laughs> so, um, I added him on Snapchat, and we just, we kind of, like, talked, but we didn't really. And then one day, he texts me, he's like, so when are we making a song? And I was like, oh, so it's happening. It's, it's happening. happening. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy, let's go. <laughs> so, I'm like, okay, so I sent him, like, 20 beats. And I'm like, we can use any one of these. And he's like, okay. He likes like the one that I was like the least mo least comfortable with. I was like, oh, the one you didn't like? Yeah, I'm like, this is so generic. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah, um, just like make a hook or something, and then send it to me. So I was like, okay. I was like, I I'm literally just like typing. I'm like, and we're dancing in the moonlight all summer long. I wrote that in like five minutes, <laughs> and then um, I I just sent it to him. He's like, bro, this is good. And then he he sent it back in like another thirty minutes, and then. We spent like a couple days arguing over his last verse, but it was made in like 90 minutes, to be honest. That's dope. Yeah. That's quick, fucking awesome. Quick and got a good... Y'all just did it like right in the moment. Just yeah. like, hey, you want to make some music? Boom, making music. Yeah. That's awesome. That's how it should be. Hell yeah. Then you went right back into uh, <laughs> Toxic Love, Depression, and Heartbreak all at once by dropping three tracks called My Suicidal Angel, Pretty Little Liars, and even a remix of Designated Driver. Yeah. Um, Suicidal Angel caught me off guard because it starts slow and gloomy, and then the beat like switches and really opens up. Mm -hmm. What inspired that? Um, so My Suicidal Angel, like the, the B switch you mean? No, the song, like the song or just like, you know, going back into, you know, not so, making music that's not making people happy, you know? Yeah, so Designated Driver is about like, the bottom line is it's about toxic friends. Like, no matter how you want to put it, like struggling, whatever, like toxic, like bad influence. Um, then Pretty Little Liars is how that, how that plays out. Um, so that was like an actual situation that Liza and I had where uh, my best friend and her best friend effectively lied to us and dumped us for each other's best friends. So we both lost our best friend. Oh, oh wow. And then we made a song called Pretty Little Lives. Okay. Um, cool. So yeah, that was like the after effect. Like that was like the, the, the midst of the drama of like the toxic friends. And then My Suicidal Angel is like kind of the after effect on Liza and I. It was just like, damn, like we lost our best friend. And it's just like helping each other with that. Um, and then for the beat, um, it was kind of, it was based off of, uh, Big City Blues by Lil Peep. Um, he has this one song and goes, do, 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 do. And then I just kind of like pitched it down or pitched it up. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, and then I was showing it to Eddie. He was like, my, my, my friend Eddie, he's like, this is cool, but you should do like a different pattern. So I was like, do, 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 do. Um, and I sent it to Teddy and he put some drums on it. It was a wrap. It was a wrap. 
Yes, it was. So what made you circle back around and do a remix to that Designated Driver? Uh, Mary oh. Beth texted me, and she's like, I've been listening to Designated Driver every day. Please let me do a remix. I was like, okay. Okay. And then she's, like, recording it, and I'm like, this is okay. And then she goes, Philly, can you pick me up? And I'm like, oh, it's... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it just hits you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So which of these songs in 2021 was your favorite to make? Um, my favorite to make? Yeah. Um, there's a lot. So I mean, I there's a lot. I, I think... Um, maybe... Uh, I like, uh, I think Hypnotize Me. Um, okay, Hypnotize Cause I like, that's a good when I, when I did it, like I did this thing with my voice and I just like, I didn't really know I could do that. Um, but like, hey, I'm on size me. I, I don't know. Like, so <laughs> okay, I okay, yeah. okay. I mean, okay. It just like kind of worked and I put it with a bunch of layers and like, it just sounds like a monster. It's like, Hypnotize Me. I don't know. Hell um, yeah. Okay, that's like, pretty cool. Hey, you're experimenting. That's what you gotta yeah. do. That's what you gotta do. Yeah. So what does the day in a life of Philly look like? What do you guys I was going to say just real quick, anybody who jumped in here after we said it, we do have down here the Q&A. You can ask Philly questions. We're going to be answering them at the end of the show once we have all our questions there. So if you got any, now to the end, put them right there and we'll check them out. Right there. Right there. Yes, you know where at. You know where at. Yeah, exactly. So what's a day in the life of Philly look like? Um, I wake up. Um... I pray. Uh, I, I before I pick my phone up, I try to just be like, "Thank you, God, for the day." Um, and then if I like forgot you yesterday, I'm like, "Thank you for yesterday too." Like just like, I feel like being thankful for each day is like super important. Um, it gives you like a completely different outlook um, when you're not doing so well. Um, and then after that, I'll check my texts and then check my Instagram, and then I'll look at the songs that I was working on yesterday and try to come up with more ideas for mixing them, and then if I get through that, then I'll start trying to do a new song, um, and then somewhere along the line, Molly Ann will come knock on my door, and he'll say, hey, I'll say, hey, I'll say, where you at? I'm like, you just knocked on my door and I answered, <laughs> like... <laughs> um, yeah, and then uh, I might play some Fortnite. Uh, do you like the no building or do you like the building? I, I hated no building. You hate really? building? Terrible. What? The building is terrible. So I, I hate sweats. Listen, I hate sweats, but not being able to defend yourself is just so miserable. Natural color, like you're, bro. you're just getting... You know what? Yeah. I mean, when you do play yes, with it, I'm assuming you play with it. Yeah. Most, most like that's your go-to game. Uh -huh. When I played it, I was just a boomer, and I was like, I played COD, I played Battlefield, like you I know how to build. aim and shoot, and building uh -huh. was out of my thing. So yeah. Build. When I'm not, you don't have that, I can imagine you're like, it's a shield basically, and you're like, I don't have my shield. I'm sitting. Yeah. Down. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not like an avid builder. Like I, I can't build crazily. But like, if I need to protect myself, then like I can press the buttons and like spin around and shit. Like. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> what, do, what do you play on? Like, towers and PS4. PS4? Okay. Yeah. Um, and then after that, uh, I'll probably call someone, uh, make a song. Maybe Michael. Maybe not. Uh, and then I'll decide what I'm doing for the rest of the day. So some days I'll go over to uh, Scud House and I'll work with uh, Blue Jacket um, or Kai. I'm still trying to work with Tino. Um, and then some days I'll go to Smiley's and I'll work with him. And then some days I'll just like sleep and chill. Like, and then I'm also uh, doing calculus. Oh, so I'm, I'm supposed to be doing calculus this year. Supposed to be. Supposed to um, be. <laughs> He's got so interviews I'm, to do. <laughs> I'm getting. I'm getting on it. Yeah, on. yeah. Uh, for Philly's teachers out there, he's getting on it. Don't worry. How many uh, days a week do you think you? Dedicate to music that you're making. Music I work. thought you were gonna talk so about. Glad, I thought you were I'm gonna so talk about. I'm so glad you said music. <laughs> yeah, fuck up. I'll give you I that. thought you were gonna do that too. I thought it was uh, like a big zero. We yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> big fat donut. Normally like six, 
maybe normally seven, six. So you say it's an odd day out if you don't make music at least yeah. at some point. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, maybe not make. I mean, some days I won't write anything, I won't record anything, but I'll do a lot of mixing. At least some element of it. Yeah. Or I'll just. It's understandable. There was a good four months before April or March where I was just like, I spent like three hours looking for beats and I just come away with nothing and be sad. That happens. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, do you do any like uh, before you like get to working on a beat? Do you do like uh, like drills or like just kind of a warm up? Like I'm doing this for 15 minutes and then just stop and actually. Start no, working? so like I, I know what you mean. Like I have some some artists that come into my studio and do that, but like normally, like if I if I don't feel like my voice might be on, I'll just go just like go up, make sure it's good, um, and then like while while it's just playing, I'll just like sing it, make sure I like kind of have a good idea. Go through the beat once. I'll record it. Okay. Okay. It, it, would you say like that's your whole process then for making music? Um. Or do you have like more like that, that you add to the process? No. So for making singing music, where I have layers, I have um. I'll have like either two, three, or five layers on a verse. Um. So I'll have to like record it and then record it again. And then generally, off those first two, I can tell if one of them's messed up or if they're both like perfect. And then I'll just keep going off that. And then for a hook, I'll do like eight layers. So like recording can take like a second. Like it'll take like 30, 40 minutes for me. Uh, just cause like I'm doing the line over and over. Yeah, yeah. Um, make sure you got the best one. But well, he's doing layers. the recording is fun though, because I, I can be like, I can try things however I want. Like I can have fun. But when then I have to sit down and mix it, and it's just like. Oh. That's where the work begins. I totally feel you, man. So what are some things that you've overcome while starting music to get to where you are today? Um, I think just, like, honestly, uh, a lot of criticism. Because, uh, like I said, I was just, like, terrible. Um, so I, I dealt with a lot of that. And then at some point, I just, like, stopped caring. And then at some point, I actually got good, and I still didn't care. Um, <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there are like other things in like personal life, like a lot of breakups. Um, like they, they made it hard, right? But like they, they made me make some damn good songs. Um, Probably learned a lot of lessons too. Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not unfortunate. You gotta learn those lessons, man. Yeah. Honestly. You got to. Yeah. I feel like you can't you can't know like what a good relationship is. You, you can't know what you want. Ones. Exactly. I totally agree. So uh, what's what's a daily positive habit that you have to make sure you have a good day? Great. Okay. Just like uh, yeah. I mean it'll it won't make sure I have a good day. I don't have anything that's like, oh if I do this I'm gonna have a good day. Um, when you're in a relationship like emotions can swing very fast, but just like trying to remain like level headed, um, and just like yeah, just like praying. Just like be thankful that you're there. I don't know. Yeah, I get that. That's a good answer. So then twenty three days ago you posted a track called All Gone mm -hmm. on SoundCloud with three other artists, Mary Beth, uh, Beds and Jigs, uh, which is an alternative rock song about being heartbroken. What brought you four together to make this track? Yeah, so first of all, uh, shout out my boy Backwoods, that's uh, his name, um, but this happened, oh, Okay. you good, this happened in the, the end of 2019, towards the beginning of 2020, so I actually, I had that out of my album, and like, it was just like, it was just like a damn good song, so I, I, I couldn't find the file, so I texted Mary Beth, I'm like, you have this, and she's like, yeah, so she sent it to me, so I, I just posted it back on SoundCloud, because um, I didn't want to post it under two different names. Um, but what happened was Mary Beth came over and she had just gotten out of a breakup. She's like writing all this crazy shit, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but she wrote like a couple of good lines. So I was like, okay, this is what we're going to say. This is what we're not going to say. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, she came out with a banger hook. Um, and then I, I sent it to Mr. J. So that's actually, Jigs is a teacher at my school. Okay. Um, he's like... He performs at all like the shows, the pep shows, assemblies. Interesting. Okay. Um, he sounds exactly like Eminem, basically. I did notice that when I, there was uh -huh. a different song I was listening to, and I heard Jigs, and I was like, "We have another 50 cal, another Eminem here." Yeah, yeah he's got geez. a little taste to it. Yeah. Um, the whole schools in on the, uh, in the music, jeez. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, then I, the big shot was backwards because I hadn't really worked with him before. I was like, yo, would you hop on this? He's like, yeah. And then he sent it back like three months later. And I was like, yes, it sounds good. It was <laughs> yeah, <like> nice. <laughs> but three months, were you like kind of like bummed from? Well, like, it's a long time, but you got to understand, I wasn't very good at the time either. So like, okay. Um, I guess I can give you that. But yeah, my, my vocals aren't actually on the uh, album or on that song. So like I got a lot of heat when I dropped Judas because people were like, your best song you're not even on. Ah, <laughs> uh, I, I was understand. like, maybe not, but I put nice. it together. <laughs> oh, you composed it. You're the kind executive of. producer then. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I made it happen. Exactly. Yeah, and you know, so that's, that's something to be proud about right there. Oh, yeah. Uh, so now on to the main event, of course, your newest album that you dropped January 24th, 2022. Love Renaissance 1437, which houses 23 tracks totaling an hour and seven minutes of ear candy. What gave you the idea for this album? Can you explain what the story is and, uh, you know, take some time to talk about it? Uh, yeah, so... Uh, basically, I had a bunch of really good songs. <laughs> I feel and, like that's uh, how every album starts. So I, I was like, well, maybe I can make a project. I wanted it to be like a super elaborate project, have like a lot of different tastes, but like be collectively one story that like gave people a bit of a taste of everything. Um, and I I remember I was like trying to think of names, and then one day I just heard the word Renaissance. I like that. So I, I was like, love Renaissance, like bring back love. And then I was like, okay, but that's like it's not gonna it's not gonna be good for like Google search optimization. So I was like, okay, I need a number. So I, I came up with the number 1437, and it acronyms to I Love You Forever. So each each number is the number of letters in each word. Um, so it's like the bring, bringing back love, like, permanently. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah. That, that's the name. That's, that's the story of it, then? Um, yeah. And then, okay, let me let me get into it. Yeah. yeah. No, I guess if you don't, I got something I can bring up and ask a question. So, um... It started, it started with like kind of the poppy songs, and I was like, okay, well, like these are good songs. I don't even know if I want to put them on the album because like they're already out, so like I don't necessarily have to. But like, I wanted to put a lot of songs on there. Originally, like I was struggling with it because I wanted to put like 35 songs on it. Oh boy! Like I, I had them all laid out, and like Talk I about had to people getting skipped, your songs getting skipped over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I had to go like my whole summer of 2021 was basically me saying. I'm not gonna post it. Take, you know, it's not going up. It's not going up. This one isn't happening. There are like 20 songs that I was like, okay, I, I, I'm just gonna let go of this one for now. Um, and then, yeah, at some point, I, around the same time last year, actually, I started making, uh, I made Limelight, um, and then I made Deadbeat, um, and those were just songs about like, so Deadbeat, Deadbeat is about just like feeling lost from God. Like, you just feel like you're alone. Um, okay. So like in one of the lines it says, if you're my father, then you're a deadbeat. Um, and then the next song is Ill Mind of Philly. And I originally, have you ever heard the Ill Mind of Hobson 7? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was originally going to be on that beat. And then I was like, I don't want to deal with this copyright shit. <laughs> so yeah, I, I found real. this guy, Zach Sutton. He's like an amazing producer. Um, but he does pre for pre for profit shit. So I, I found this like uh, Louis Armstrong sample that he did, and yeah, I just put it over that. It was just like, God, where the fuck are you? And like, I was like, if you're really real, I'll pray each morning in the dust. Blah 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 blah. Um, there is there's some other lines. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, then limelight is a switch. So limelight, limelight is. So it starts like super positive and it like kind of builds up. It's like, it's my turn. Like it is my turn right now. Like this is my album. All of this, like I, I created this. Um, and then towards the end, it's like, while you were building all of this or while I was building all this, some of your other friends were going down super shitty paths and this is what it did to them. Um, so like the last, the last part of it, it goes run a little faster and never look back. Uh, like, don't look through the grass, blah, blah, blah. Like, just, like, keep running. Because, like, everything you did, all that's going to come back to you. Um, yeah. And then it switches to, like, the poppy stuff. And then that's, like, the beginning stage of a new relationship, right? 
So it's like where the angels fly, like we're just like on a date, like dancing. Mm -hmm. We're dancing in the moonlight, like butterflies in the summer, yay. I don't know why we dropped it in October. <laughs> um, but um, then it switches to like relationship. It's like hypnotize me and then addicted to you. It's like a super toxic love. Um, and then it just slowly deteriorates. And then finally it's just like, fuck you. And then it comes back and it's me finding myself again after a breakup. Okay. And then at the end, it's just me giving thanks to God for everything. So okay. with the the project, it starts off. There's a lot of like news clips and talking about like current events, mm -hmm. uh, and then you also kind of go to your pastor and you're talking to him mm -hmm. about it, just what's going on and everything, and just trying to understand it all. Uh, then towards the end, you actually kind of come to this uh, epiphany of like, hey, this is this is what I'm the the answer I was looking for essentially. So kind of what led that direction with the project because there are a couple different project directions here but that was the one that i really had hell seen yeah out to me. so that was that was actually a super pivotal song on the project it's just a skit but um i was talking to ryan my youth pastor and i was like look like i have limelight here and i have like ill mind of philly and deadbeat and riviera dreams here but like there's no there's no connect it just kind of switches like it doesn't really make sense like i need answers so like so he's like, okay, so we're going through the Bible, like looking for answers and shit. And then finally it came to this one thing and it was like, in peace I will lie down for I know that, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, so we're not actually looking for answers. And maybe we are, but what we really need is just a resolution. We need a resolution so that we can feel at peace. Cause like that's what we need as humans to feel peaceful, um, in my opinion. Um, and then it comes back to limelight. And then it's like, okay, I can finally do this. Like, it's my turn. Um, yeah. What was the uh, specific news cast uh, snippets that you picked? Like, why, so, why those ones, I guess? Debbie. So, I mean, they kind of summarize, like, all the issues going on in America. Um, and just, like, there's the war, um, and then there's shootings. Uh, and then there's COVID cases, um, and there's something else too, but like, it just kind of, like all of it happened at once, and I had it so it was like going throughout your ears, so like everything's coming at you at once and you, you can't do anything. Like, it's just all happening at once, and I don't, that's just kind of how it was. And I, I think that was where it switches over to Illman and Philly, and you're just like, ah! Yeah, dude, when I first heard that, that got me. I laughed out loud for it. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah, like, yeah. Dude, I feel I, that so I, much right now. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. I feel that so much. Dude, alright, so I know you don't watch much of the news, but for me at that time, it was just, there was so much going on. It was just all I, at once. I was there, living in your house. Yeah. I know what was going on in your head, bro. Yeah. You were paranoid nuts. every single going day. Nuts. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. So, also with uh, I know. some of the beginning tracks there, you have a lot of influences from Kanye West. Mm -hmm. So is he one of the main influences for the project? Yeah, so... There are basically two types of beasts on the project. There were Billy Eilish beats and Kanye West beats. Okay. Billy Eilish, okay. I and then the other kind was that. Billy Eilish, Kanye West beats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I got you. yeah, Riviera Dreams, I think, was a Kanye type beat. Dead Beat was a Kanye, Billy Eilish type beat. Oh My Da Philly was a Kanye type beat. Uh, Limelight and the Skit were Kanye type beats. And then uh, Where the Angels Fly was like a disco beat. Dancing in the Moonlight was a Ariana Grande, Billy Eilish beat. Uh, on the clock, sunrise on the moon, like almost all those were Billy Eilish type beats. Okay. So like, yeah. Um, I think I strayed away from the question. Well, those were your inspirations. Yeah, those were your, yeah, yeah. So yeah. those were those were some of my inspirations, but also uh, Hobson, you know, Mind of Philly, um, Hobson and Dax. Like they both Dax yeah. did a thing called Dear God. Hobson did Oh Mind of Seven or Oh Mind of Hobson Seven. Um, so like that was kind of from that. Um, and then, I mean... You had, like, a Dr. Dre snippet in there, like, hold up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was... Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. That was that was an abuse. So I, I originally had it as, uh, went so hard I got a boner. And then I, I cut out oh, the boner. And then <laughs> hold up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. <laughs> so what three songs from the album would you urge listeners to go stream as soon as this interview ends? Uh... Uh, you got 20, 20 okay. something to pick, I think uh, Jiggy on a Friday. Um, That's a good one.
I mean, we were here. Sunrise on the Moon. Uh, and then either On the Clock or State Street. Okay. State Street's a good one, too. Hell yeah. So what was your favorite song to make from the album, then? Which one was your, what was your favorite to create? Favorite to create? Give me a hard question. Okay, so, um, I think the most elaborate song that, like, I enjoyed creating the most was Deadbeat. Um, there are, like, 80 different tracks on there. Like, not even, like, vocal stuff, but there's, like, I have, like, footsteps at the beginning, like, going in a circle, and then I have, like, eight different news snippets, and then, uh, I have, like, another snippet, and then I have, like, effects, um, it was just, like, like, the song, it kind of felt like just, like, a movie, um, like, when I initially, I announced Love Renaissance, um, I used Deadbeat, and, like, I had a, uh, visual thing for that, it was actually, it was just, like, the news snippets, except, like, the visual things, um, and then, like, I had, like, it started with one, and then it was, like, two, and then it was, like, four. All you just had, like, yeah. all of them talking to you at once. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. I think that was, like, my favorite uh, production-wise. Yeah, it seems like production. a lot went into it. And you can yeah. tell, too, because, yeah, there is everything coming at you at once. Oh, yeah. Facts. So what do you want the listener to take away from this music, from your music, though? Um, I think what I wanted people to take away from the album, at least, was that, like, shit happens everybody goes through shit like you'll have happy times bad times terrible times but like at the end of the day like you're still just you and like it may mold you a bit but like you'll still be yourself um like it just makes you who you are and there's nothing wrong with that and even though like it's hard to get through some of those times like you will be okay of course um okay yeah i think it's a good way good takeaway from the uh, yeah. project That's uh real quick here just uh you did have a picture back there oh yeah i uh, want to let the listener though uh know though we uh, did get a couple of copies of the project here physical cd yeah, press gave us some signed it in. for us and uh do you have any extras that if somebody wanted one they could buy one from you or was oh hell yeah i got like 60 of them where oh, should they perfect. hit you up on instagram's fine instagram. oh well instagram's not fine okay, actually. what's a backup not... just in yeah case. what's your what's another one they can go to um you can uh you can hit me up on my uh snapchat it's uh, Phileas2003, P-H-I-L-E-A-S, 2003. Um, or you can, like, stalk me on Facebook. Okay. Anyway, if you really want a copy, there's ways yeah, to find there's me. Ways to there find are ways it. to yeah. find me, I promise. <laughs> All right, so the All cover right. art was actually drawn by somebody. Yeah, you know. so this is the cover art. Um, That's, like, put it up the painting bit. itself? Or? Uh-huh. Do you want to you hold it up on the, yeah, yeah, the camera there? I don't know. If so I'm what was, it was uh, acrylic That's an actual, or? that's a literal painting right there. Yeah. It's a literal painting. It was a uh, acrylic like uh, oil painting. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. You guys could look I I texted Liza or I was talking to Liza. I was like, I need a cover, and she's like, Okay, well, what do you want? And I was like, Just give me something that reminds me of the Renaissance of love. So she starts like she draws it out like with like just like the outlines and stuff, and I'm like, That looks freaking amazing. And then she like she started painting it, and it, it took like a month or so. But like she killed it. Like it looks she did an nice. amazing great job with it. She's yeah. so talented. Like she, her. I did not think that that was a the cover was a painting. I thought it was you made that like online. Yeah, no, she. That's crazy. She is a genius in her That's own awesome. right. Like she sees things like as art, and she sees things very differently, and like it's awesome. Like being being an artist and being with someone who's like fucking genius it's fucking amazing hell yeah dude no that's, cr yeah, that's dude. crazy uh, hey, you need somebody to make your cover arts right yeah so how did you get it from that to computer do you scan it or was yeah it so why did it why that me take like a picture on notes or something and then i like cut it over or something okay and then, yeah just did that way all right i don't okay. know if they like took a printer or something trying to scan it oh but, okay yeah no i was going to but like that more effective ways easier <laughs> easier ways yeah <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna get into uh, the social media deep dive. Yes. Also, one more time, if you got any questions oh. for Philly, put it right there. Coming up to the end of the show, we'll get yes, your questions sir, yes, answered. Sir. So social media deep dive. Uh, we're gonna start firstly on Instagram, but unfortunately, um, you you made a new account, but then as of like an hour or so ago, you can't <laughs> even get into it or use the account anymore. So you're kind of unlucky on Instagram, which kind of sucks. Um, so I'm not, I can't really use anything on that. There wasn't really much use anyways because you deleted everything. So Okay, so <laughs> so this is what happened. So I 
I did a little scan of my followers, and like three quarters of them were ghost followers. And like, if you have like a hundred followers, it's whatever. But like, I had two thousand followers, so I was like, I'm not gonna remove all these people. And I wanted to, I wanted to do it because it messes up my algorithm. So, for all you artists out there that are listening to me, don't get fake followers. It'll fuck you over. Don't buy likes. It'll also fuck you over. Um. You could buy promotion though, that's different. Can, that's legit, that's different. However, make sure you know exactly what you're doing when you do that. Mm -hmm. Because, so, I, I quarrel with uh, promotion every day. Um, playlists piss me off. Um, of course. And the, of reason course why, the reason why is because, um, it's one of the reasons I re-uploaded my album, um, because Right Time got bought. So I, I paid this guy like four hundred dollars to run a campaign on right time. It had like a hundred listeners and like eighteen hundred streams in a day, and I was like, Matt, don't it, it, it was like sitting there, and I had like two hundred monthly listeners and seven thousand streams on a song from like three days, and I was like, You don't take a calc student to figure that one out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um. But yeah, I've I've ran I've ran through playlists and stuff um, when I made my old music under my old account, and it's actually one of the reasons that I rebranded because um, I I dropped this song called Parental Advisory, and I paid this uh, thing called Spotify uh, to uh, put it on playlists, and like it was pretty well. Um, I had like two thousand monthly listeners, uh, like ten thousand plays on the track on Spotify, um, and then. It stopped, and it was like, okay, it stopped. Except then Spotify is like, all right, fuck you. If you want to, like, bot your shit, that's fine. But, like, once you stop, we're not giving you shit. So, like, I only I only got streams from, like, my best friends. Like, it wouldn't show people my shit. Um, so, yeah. So are you against playlisting or are you against the fake playlisting? I'm against fake playlisting, and, like, I just urge... I urge artists to be super cautious about who they trust with playlists. Because, like, if you if you go up and it's artificial, like, whatever. Like, people are going to clown you. But, like, if you go up and it just fucks everything that you built, like, you're just screwed. Like, you're just completely fucking screwed. Um, yeah. I don't know. Have you learned anything from it? Like, have you found some good tactics to try and find it, or are you just yeah? Up on playlisting? So, I'm not I'm not currently looking for playlisting just because like I, I probably will if I drop a single like at some point. But um, my personal strategy is just like attack Spotify for artists. Um, like submit your song there four weeks before, um, and then try to get blogs. If you can get blogs to post you, then Spotify likes that. Um, and they might be more likely to add you to playlists. Do they know how? Like, do they know that you're getting blocked about? I guess I uh, so about it's it. mean I mean, back well, to the search engine. I was going to say they're going to know oh. that Spot Spotify is popping up with his name in a blog. Gotcha. They'll okay. know that for sure. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, with designated driver, I didn't get playlists. I don't. I don't know. Um, so I just have like if you look Whack. at my if you look at my playlists, um, like it's on a bunch of different random playlists. But it's not like any major ones. Like I didn't get any editorials or like major playlist creators. It's just like a bunch of random people. Like it just started showing my music to people, and people started DMing me. They're just like, "Yo, I found this song. It's this is really good, man." Oh yeah. And I was like, "Thank you." Like, <laughs> and then that was around August or so. Like, um, I I was getting like 15 daily listeners on Spotify, and then it started going up to like 20, 30, and then one day it hit like 60, and I was like. Nice. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it went all the way up to like 15,000 monthly listeners, like all natural, like without me doing anything. Mm -hmm. And then since then, I've just fallen off. It's understandable. Yeah, it happens. Um, <laughs> now, the next thing is, uh, why don't you let me know if you, if you remember this. It's called Sound Click. Yeah. Yeah? It's, uh, I was looking at your, I, your SoundCloud links in your, uh, in your bio. And this one was there, and it's a. You you post your beats there to sell. Hell yeah! It so looks. I, I just want to say like it looks like uh, like a really old website. 
Yeah. Yeah. And when you and you you did post like Gen Z there as well, and you posted um, a, what a day. Or, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. What a yeah. time to be alive. What a time to be alive. What? Tell us about that. What? What is the sound click? Never heard of so, this. So sound click is like. It's like Beat Stars, except you don't have to pay for it. Um, okay. But you can pay for promotion and stuff. Um, one of my friends said that he made like a pretty good amount of money on it. Um, but I think it's kind of falling off. Um, I mean, I just posted some of my songs there because I just wanted to like put it wherever I could of course. and create search engine optimization. Um, but yeah, I, I used to make beats a lot. Um, and I kind of just like stopped for a bit, to be honest. Is it a website that's been around for a while and it yeah. just looks they it's haven't updated it much I don't think it looks that bad it just okay. doesn't look I haven't looked at fancy. it that was <laughs> it's an interesting design it's not a UI 20, choices design. they got going on no it's definitely not a 2022 design okay, I'd say okay. like 2012 maybe 2011 <laughs> that's not too bad that's you know? still decent Aaron uh, I don't know dog you play, still playing games from 2011 other than yes. Fallout shut up Black Ops I just started playing COD you Black can't Ops say COD either like, shut the fuck up <laughs> COD hasn't changed in, in <laughs> many years either uh, then going to your YouTube, and so like I said before, technically it's the first place you posted your music. Um, <laughs> what so what made you choose that? I guess was my question over over things, but we know now that you didn't choose that. It was I did time zone. Thing. It's just distro kid. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Do you have a, a preferred platform for releasing music, or one that you want people to go stream it on over another? Um. Well, here's the thing. It's kind of a dilemma. <laughs> okay. okay. Spotify shows the numbers and makes you look impressive. Mm -hmm. But Apple Music pays more. True, true. So Spotify will pay you about 0.4 cents per stream, and Apple Music will pay you about 0.6. So. Okay. Have you looked into Tidal at all? Yeah, Tidal, what do you mean? Tidal? Uh, the Tidal streaming service? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I have my stuff on there, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you're going through this, can you probably do it? Yeah. I think they're like 8 cents a stream. So, yeah, something like that. Like, it's just because yeah. Jay Z made it, and Jay Z's a fucking G. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's got money to throw around. <laughs> to be honest. So you're gonna go with the the Apple over Spotify for the fact. No, that I, th I think support. so. I don't really care about the money, honestly. Because like designated driver, like I made like I made like three hundred dollars off the song, and like it has seventy thousand streams on Spotify. Like, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I think Spotify it looks better, um, and like. Music is entertainment, like getting yourself out there. Um, but like, also, like, I don't know. Don't buy stuff. It tends to go bad. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, with having like whether or not you get paid for it, or like if you care about the numbers wise, like it's still good to if you're looking if, as a listener, if you're looking to support an artist more, pick where you're gonna be streaming their music because that does seriously help uh, them make the next song, buy the next beat, actually get them to be able to promote or just even go to the next show to promote it there. So if, if you like have one that you're preferring to like make money, not necessarily to get rich and famous, but just to help keep the craft going, because this shit ain't cheap. There's a lot of money that gets sucked in here and there. Yeah. Facts. So where can we expect Philly in the future? On the radio. On the radio? Ooh, it's what, any certain radio station? No. No? Just like on the radio. AM or FM? Are you going to be talk show host <laughs> or are you going to be like... <laughs> More podcasts in speech? I want to be... I'm not. I'm not ever gonna say like I want to be like the best artist in the world because like that's all subjective. But I want to make a number one Billboard song. That's my goal. Okay. Okay. Um, well, you just answered my next question then. <laughs> so that's that's good. Number one Billboard. That's that's awesome. I, I think that's a great goal. I think you could definitely achieve that. Um, so if you could choose any artist to get a feature from for free, who would it be? Kanye. 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 I kind of figured that would be good. That's gonna get uh, you your number one Billboard. Spot, yeah. yeah. <laughs> honestly, though, honestly. <laughs> so what's your dream venue to perform at then? Dream venue. Uh, maybe MSG, Madison Square Garden. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, I don't think they really do it, but also the Big House in Michigan. They have, uh, it's their Michigan. It's the Michigan Football Stadium. Oh, it's ah. the biggest. It's the hey, second you biggest. If money, you can you can make it happen. They have a hundred ten thousand seats. Hell yeah! Ooh, Hell one, yeah! One place to sell That'd be out. crazy. Yeah. We're coming to that one. Yes. We're coming to that <laughs> one. Yeah, we'll, we'll be there. <laughs> So as we approach the end of the show, I have one more important question to ask, and that's why, or that that is, why should people care about Philly? Because I care about you. Like I care about my fans. Like I, I want to like be there for my fans. Like I care about them. I don't know. Um, I don't know. 
sometimes people will be like, I don't like your music. And I'll say, okay, well, what kind of music do you like? And I'll say, I like this. And I'll say, okay, I'll make a song like that. I, I want to make You heard him here first. You got <laughs> requests. He, may, he, goes, he makes for all <laughs> requests, guys. <laughs> Tell him what kind of music you like if you're his fan, and be like, yo, make this now, and he'll do it. <laughs> Other than hip hop, I guess, real quick, what genre would you want to make next? Um, I mean, I'm already doing pop, dark pop. Um, and maybe one you haven't tried out yet. Uh, I want to do, I want to do some Yeezus shit. Yeah. Like I, I was recording some stuff the other day. Um, I was, I was very upset, like overstimulated, whatever. Molly on walks in the room and he's like listening to me, like screaming to the mic, and I'm like, Molly on knows this is trash. But he's letting me have my moment. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. At least he, ha- he, he lets you have your moment. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I feel like um, the way that the way that Kanye did like his vocal inflections in there, he's like, but yeah, like he, oh god, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Kanye Kanye will enunciate how he wants to enunciate. That's something I really like about him. Um, other than the fact he says what the fuck he wants to, like I've, I've disagreed with a lot of things he said, but I'm like, you said it, so. and he stands behind it too. He doesn't like yeah. switch up and shit like that. Yeah. So. I, 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 I see that. I respect that yeah. as well. Um, so here at the end of the show, it's been dope having you here, of course. Yes. We're very happy that you came down and gave us your time. If you were to rate this interview 1 out of 10, what would you rate it? 11. 11. Oh, there we go. Appreciate that. Hell yeah. yeah. Would you recommend other artists come, come through and get interviewed? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's Hell all I like yeah. to hear. So this is uh, where you can go ahead and promote anything you want, talk about anything you want, give shout outs, ask us questions. Take as much time as you got. You, you got the microphone. It's your show now. Um, I first of all, I just want to say that uh, Malian's tape is dropping on Sunday. It's his 19th birthday. Hey. So if y'all aren't racist and you want to support black people, oh my god, <laughs> what the Malian? Malian's dropping inside my mind EP on Sunday. Um, Where can we find? That was a platform? great way it'll to be, manipulate the <laughs> manipulate the masses. It'll be it'll be on every single platform, uh, courtesy of me. Um, uh, second of all, I want to. I want to give Smiley his flowers. I didn't really talk about it, but Smiley really changed my life. Um, him teaching me how to do vocal layers really like elevated my music to a completely <coughs> different level. Um, I want to shout out Control because he makes he made five of the six beats on Molly's tape, and he just gave them to him for free. Oh wow, um, nice! Um, there you go. He's yeah, he's gonna be huge one day. Um, shout out Kari. Shout out uh, Isaiah, Blue Jacket, Kai Twenty Two, Tino In Tune. Uh, shout out Michael, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, cocky bitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And shout out, shout out locally. Me you, and, you, me you already know him. if you didn't shout out Michael, he would have been <laughs> <laughs> you, already, you already know, he would have found it. He was going to go to the end of the podcast <laughs> just to make sure you shouted him out. All right, sorry to cut you off, but yeah. Locally. Locally, locally yeah. copped. Yeah, shout out locally copped. He, he gives the best features in the world. Like, he's... He's so, so talented. Um, I haven't listened to enough of your catalog. I know you're listening to this, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but, like, your features and the melodic shit is so beautiful. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I know I'm forgetting some people, so I'm sorry. Uh, shout out Mary Beth, because she has an amazing voice. And shout out Liza for doing my whole cover art. Um, it was well done. It was like, yeah. fuck yeah. It was like what made the album come together. She filled in places where I needed her to, and she just like she helped me like write, create, do everything. She was just kind of there. So, love well. you. Um, well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, perfect. That's awesome. Well, I think that was a good interview. Yeah, I, it was uh, great interview. Had a lot of fun. La- got to learn a lot about the project because uh, listened to it a lot doing the write up. So I got to hear it. I think, pro- I'll be honest, like good fifteen times back to back. Jesus. Back to- so here's so, how I do it. The, I, so the tracks you have 10 plays on, they're all him? Yeah, no, like they were going up, that was because of me. So I, <laughs> I, listen, I listen through it multiple times, so I like I know what I'm writing up about so I can summarize it. So yeah, I really enjoyed the project. It was a good listen through. Uh, congrats, man. Like, it was a good... I mean, you said this was the second one you made, but first one you put out, right? Yeah. No, it was a per- great debut project for it. For thank, it. You. thank you for listening, like, how many times. And thank you for doing the write-up. Hell yeah. Like... What did you think of it, I guess? It was good. It was a great write-up. Um, I don't know, just like... when Help people search engine. Yeah, <laughs> when people... Somebody did... I paid this other trash-ass company to do write-ups, and like they took until like after I dropped it to do the write-up, and I was like, fuck you guys, I'm paying you like $200. Um, 
but they their article got me posted somewhere else, and I was like, okay. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> it's fine. Well, let it happen again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Yeah, it's, it's fun. been fun though. I've, I've enjoyed them, so I apologize it was after the release. Yeah, I have, no, no. I have it's a okay. bit of a catalog. It takes okay. me about a week yeah, for each one. He didn't pay one. you $200, yeah, so no, I don't no, think you no. mind. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I uh, no, I really appreciate the project. I gl I'm glad you got us signed CD here. I'll add oh, it to yeah, my collection. Thank you for the yes. going. Yeah. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. It's a great gift. Uh, where can the listener find you at? What social media is? Uh, all that good stuff. We keep asking about social media. He's making them sad, bro. So... Anything I but Instagram. Be, yeah. I will be back on my Instagram at I am Philly uh, with three Y's and two underscores at the end. Um, I will be back there. I will get that account. Back. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, and yeah, CW Hip Hop posts me like every day, so y'all see me. Y'all see me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah. guys know where to find them, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. If you want, if you want to find it. It's uh, it's tagged on the post, uh, our most recent post. <laughs> yes. So you can find it on CW Hip Hop. Hell yeah. Uh, and our Instagram and Facebook. So definitely don't want to miss out on what he's got coming. Oh, I'm sure he's excited got to see you grow, man. I I see the progress you got going. So Madison Square Garden. Here we come. Here we come. Hell Kanye yeah. next. Hell <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kanye next. Let's go. Start tagging Hell him. Yeah. That Yeezus flow. Hell yeah. All right. Well, follow us on all social medias at Facebook and Instagram. Uh, CW Hip Hop. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram. BBNC95. Garky, where can the listener find you at? You can find me on Instagram at Garky Gaines. G A R K E G A I N Z, and pretty much any other platform. I just Garky. What about you, Prism? You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Prism Rap. P R I Z M R A P. And thank you, everyone, for stopping in, listening, and. Uh, just being here for your boy Philly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. We appreciate everybody who's listening, and we also appreciate you, Philly, once again, for coming down, taking time out of your day, and, and coming in and let us interview you. Hell yeah. yeah thank a couple you guys weirdos <laughs> ask questions to you. Yeah. Up in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, up in the middle of fucking nowhere. <laughs> All right. We do have another uh, interview with somebody coming into the studio here. JD just dropped his project changes. So we'll be talking about that April next week. Yep. Uh, some concerts, too. Want to make sure you guys are aware. This Friday, April 8th at 10 p.m. Be J there. JD, Prism, Cookies and Cream at Night School in Western Wisconsin. Come. Be there. <laughs> I mean, you went all the way to Oshkosh. It's 21 plus. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> we'll give you a slide this time. Uh, <laughs> also, Saturday, <laughs> April time. 9th, this Saturday at 9 p.m., Big Savo and Young Sage are going to be performing at the Oasis in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So check them out there as well. But we have our uh, questions we're going to have on our IGTV. We're going to end the recording here. So if you want to hear those, go check us out on Instagram at CW Hip Hop so you can hear those. Uh, but unless you guys got anything else to add, I think we should wrap it up. We appreciate y'all. Hope you guys enjoyed Philly's interview. Love you guys. There he is. All right. All right. Peace. 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 See you next week. Bird. <laughs> <laughs> All right.